So in this video, we're going to talk about internal loading. And the first thing that we have to know before we do internal loading is positive internal sign convention. So we have a beam structure. Here's the beginning. Here's the end. And when I make a cut, I can sh I'm going to draw the left side of the cut and the right side of the cut. And on the left side of the cut, any normal force that goes away from the section is considered positive. Any shear force that's pointing down is considered positive. And any moment that's causing compression at the top is considered positive. And it's equal and opposite on the right side of the cut. And this is our positive internal sign convention. So let's do some examples. So when we do calculate internal loads, we're trying to figure out due to the external loads, what's the internal loading in the beam? So I have this cantilever beam and I want to find the internal load one meter away from the free end. And usually what we do is calculate the support reactions. And so the support reactions at the f fixed end, I have a vertical support, a horizontal support, and a moment. I'll call this point B. To find the support reactions, I just apply equilibrium equations. BY is five kilonewtons, take some of the forces in the horizontal. That tells me BX is zero. And I take moments at about point B, this, and I'll get MB minus five kilonewtons times three meters equals zero. And this will be MB is 15 kilonewton meters. And then to get the internal load at A, I make a cut through point A. I want to draw either the left side or the right side of the cut. So if I draw the right side of the cut, this is what my free body diagram will look like. And I'm going to assume internally positive. So at the face of the cut, my drawing, so it's going to match this side. I'm going to assume all the arrows point in the same direction as the right side of the cut. I'll say here is NA, VA, and MA. And then I'm going to apply the equilibrium equations. So some of the forces in the vertical. I have VA minus 5, and that tells me that VA, the shear, is 5 kilonewtons. And then I take some of the forces in the horizontal. That tells me the normal force is 0. And then I take some of the moments about the cut, minus MA, minus 5 kilonewtons times 1 meter. That MA is negative 5 kilonewton meters. And so what this means is, you know, I got a positive result for the shear. So the shear is actually pointing up on the face of the cut. The normal force is 0. The moment is negative, so instead of in instead of in this uh, causing compression at the top or going clockwise, my moment is actually five kilonewton meters going like this or going counterclockwise. So that's what my internal loading would look like. And this is if I chose the right side of the cut. If I chose the left side of the cut, I should get the same results. But the free body diagram that I draw would be I have to include the support reactions on the left side of the cut. I'm going to again assume internally positive. So that means. She here, I'll call that VA pointing down, moments going like this, MA and NA like this. I'm going to go ahead and apply equilibrium equations for this drawing. I'll have to have negative VA plus 5 kilonewtons equals zero. This tells me that VA is 5 kilonewtons. It's on the left side of the cut. This will be pointing down, 5 kilonewtons pointing down. If I take some of the forces in the horizontal, that just tells me NA equals zero again. And if I take some of the moments about the cut, you know, I'll get 15 kilonewton meters minus five kilonewtons times two meters plus MA equals zero. And when I solve for this, I'll get MA is negative five kilonewton meters. On the left side of the cut, that moment causing compression at the bottom. You'll notice that the shear and the moment from the right side of the cut and the left side of the cut are equal and opposite. See, let's do another example here. Let's say I have a simply supported beam. A uniformly distributed load halfway across the beam, four meters long. I want to find the internal loading at point C. And so the first thing I want to do is determine the support reactions. And here's my free body diagram. And I'm just going to apply the equilibrium equations. So some of the forces in the horizontal equal to zero. That tells me AX equals zero. I'll do some of the forces in the vertical. AY plus BY minus the resultant of the distributed load, which I put in that little orange arrow here. The length of the distributed load load here is two meters. So the resultant here is two times two, which is four kilonewtons. So it'd be minus four kilonewton equal to zero. Then I'm going to take some of the moments about point A, negative four kilonewtons times one meter plus BY times four meters equals zero. And I would get that BY is one kilonewton. And then if I plug that back into the sum of the force in the vertical, that tells me AY is three kilonewtons. All right. 
So I have my support reactions and now I want to determine the internal loading at C. I like to replace my support reactions with like the forces and the moments. And then now I'm going to make a cut through point C and I can choose to draw either the left or the right side. I'll do both. If I choose the left side of the cut, I'm going to draw my free body diagram, assuming positive internal loading. And that'll be a normal force away the cut positive internal shear points down and the moment causes compression at the top. And then I'm gonna apply my equilibrium equations. Some of the forces in the vertical, I have three kilonewtons minus two times two, which is four kilonewtons minus VC equals zero. And so VC here in this case will be negative one kilonewton. What that means is that's one kilonewton pointing up on the face of the cut. Some of the force in the horizontal is pretty trivial. That just tells me the normal force is zero. All right, so now I want to do some of the moments about the cut. Going left to right, I'll take the, let's see, that three kilonewton support reaction on the left causes a negative moment about the cut. So negative three kilonewtons times three meters. The resultant of the distributed load causes a positive moment about the cut. Cut. So here this would be 4 kilonewtons times the location of that 4 kilonewtons is 2 meters from the cut. So times 2 meters and then plus MC equal to 0. And that just tells me MC is 1 kilonewton meter. And because I get a positive result, I'm causing compression at the top. And so these are my internal loads at the cut. I can get the same results equal and opposite if I use the right side of the cut, which is actually a lot easier. And the free body diagram for the right side of the cut will look like this. And I'm going to draw my internal loading, assuming positive internal load. Some of the forces in the vertical direction, I'd have VC plus one kilonewton equals zero. That tells me VC is negative one kilonewton, which on the right side of the cut is one kilonewton pointing down. And you'll see that it's equal and opposite to what we found on the left. The normal force is zero. When I take moments about the cut, I'll get negative MC and the one kilonewton causes a positive moment about the cut plus one kilonewton times one meter equals zero. And that tells me MC is one kilonewton meter, which on the right side of the cut on the side causing compression at the top. This And again, you'll notice that the left and the right side are equal and opposite. So you could just draw one side. You could do the calculations for one side and then just draw them equal and opposite to the other. All right. And just to make sure that you got it, we'll do one more example because that's the way I roll here. Let's see. Let's take a, again another simply supported beam. Maybe a little bit more complicated this time. Loading wise, I will draw a linearly distributed load. Let's see. I want to find the internal load here at this point right here. Point C. And the first thing I want to do is determine the support reactions. And that will involve here my free body diagram. And let's see, the resultant of this distributed load is the area of this triangle, which is one half the base of six meters times the height, three kilonewtons per meter. So this is equal to nine kilonewtons. And it is located at the centroid of the triangle, which is one third from the, the tall side. And so this would be two meters like that. Some of the forces in the horizontal is pretty trivial. It tells me that AX equals zero. If I do some of the forces in the vertical, that is going to be that AY plus BY minus nine kilonewtons equals zero. And let's see here. If I do some of the moments about A, this will tell me that BY times six meters, BY causes a positive moment about A minus the nine kilonewton resultant of the distributed load times an arm of four meters. And it's negative because that nine kilonewtons causes is a negative moment about A equal to zero right here. And this tells me that BY is, um, let's see, nine times four is 36. Divided by six is six kilonewtons and AY three kilonewtons. So I've got my support reactions. And now I'm going to make a cut at point C. I can choose the left side or the right side of the cut. And looking at this, I'm like, dude, I do not want to deal with the trapezoidal loading on the right side. If I look at the left side, you know what? I'm just going to have a distrib another triangle shaped distributed load. And that seems a lot more manageable 
than the trapezoidal one. We can do the trapezoidal one, but it takes a little bit more effort. Okay, so here, let's just go ahead and do the left side of the cut. The internal loading at C, I'm going to assume internally positive again. So on the left side, I'll have NC away from the cut. VC pointing down in the moment causing compression at the top. At this point right here, I don't know what the value of the distributed load is right there. I'll call it W star. But I do know it is the same as this right here, this W star. And, you know, I could create an equation or I can just use similar triangles. And by proportions, I know that W star over two meters is three kilonewton per meter over six meters. And so that tells me that the value of the distributed load at that point or at the cut at C is one kilonewton per meter. Hey, look at how that worked out. Now I'm going to apply equilibrium equations. Forcing the horizontal is pretty trivial. This tells me that NC equals zero. All right, I'm going to do some of the forces in the vertical. I'll have three kilonewtons pointing up. I'll have the resultant of the distributed load right here. See, the area of this triangle is one half one kilonewton per meter times the base of two meters. And that's just going to tell me that this resultant is one kilonewton minus one kilonewton minus VC equals zero. And this will tell me that VC is two kilonewton. And I'll get a positive result. So that means it's two kilonewtons down on this side of the cut. Then I'm going to take some of the moments about the cut and let's see the three kilonewtons causes a negative moment of the cut. So negative three kilonewtons times two meters. The resultant from the distributed load causes a positive moment. So one kilonewton and the location of the resultant here is one third of the two meters. So this is two thirds meters. So it'd be one kilonewton times two thirds in the moment and see solve for this internal moment is five and a third kilonewton meters we get a positive result that indicates that we have compression at the top these are my internal loads at c all right hopefully that was useful take it easy structure